Man, I feel stupid as hell for getting these. Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another San Diego Comic Con 2015 exclusive figure review on the Marvel Infinite series Ant Man box set. This thing is really cool. I really like this box set and just the way this looks. I like how he has these antennae over here, which are posable. This thing stands at 21 inches tall up to the antennae over here. And you can open this up and you can see the figures inside. You get this read up over here. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it now. And then this is held together with some Velcro, and then looking on the back, we got a lot of Hank Pym, Hank Pym, Hank Pym, and Hank Pym, and one Scott Lang. All right, let's get to it and crack these things open. And here's all the figures out of the packaging. Now, we're not really getting too many new molds over here. We do get a new head sculpt for the Giant Man figure. This is definitely a reused Icons figure. We'd seen this before with the Goliath and the previous Giant Man and Scroll Giant Man. Uh, we get a brand new head sculpt for that Goliath head sculpt, but we are getting the Bucky Cap mold once again. Then we get reused parts for this Ant-Man. It looks like the only newly sculpted figure entirely is the Scott Lang over there. So here's a tiny Ant-Man that we get with this figure set. We've seen this before with the 3 3 quarter inch Marvel Universe Ant-Man. So nothing really different over here. But it's painted well and I think it looks really good. So that's good. Uh, for your size comparison, here it is next to American Quarter. I guess the comic version of Antony is the Queen Ant. I've been calling it the Queen Ant. But just saw the movie so it's Antony, not the Queen Ant. Yeah, when I see that, I think that looks really cool. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. But yeah, just too bad he can't stand on his own. Then side by side with Yellow Jacket over here. So I don't know, he's a little shorter than Yellow Jacket. Now looking at this little Scott Lang over here, it looks alright. I just don't like how you can't see any kind of detail around the front section of the helmet. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. It looks more like Ghost. You know what I mean? I think that just, I don't know, that bothers me a lot. I do like the silver paint though, and the paint apps do look pretty clean on the figure throughout. So that's not too shabby, you know. And it does stand on its own too, which is really important. I like that. And compared to a quarter, there you go. So yeah. Yeah, not too bad, and compared to the Ant-Man that came in the wave, you know, he's much bigger than this Ant-Man. Here's the 3 3 quarter inch Ant-Man Dr. Pym, and this is pretty much the same thing as the 3 3 quarter inch Ant-Man figure that came out. Uh, they added this lab coat, and they gave him different arms, so you can see as we open this up, it is the same paint job and everything on the inside over here. I don't know if this lab coat and these different arms came from another figure or not, so if you do know, please let me know in the comments below. I know that he does have different hands over here, and you do get a different head sculpt that you could swap this out with. So so you can take that off and then go ahead and put on a helmetless Hank Pym head right on there. Come on, get on there, Pym. All right, there it is. This looks all right, you know. It looks like a blonde kind of angry Hank Pym. Not too bad. I like the flesh tone of it. Paint came out pretty clean. So yeah, not too bad. I like it. Now here's the two figures standing side by side again. Now as far as articulation goes, you can get him to look up just only a tiny, tiny bit. His head does not really move down that much at all. Shoulder, and he can rotate the head side to side, of course. So that's the main point of articulation at the head. Shoulders move outward. You can move him downward that much. Move forward, bicep swivel, single jointed elbow. Wrist moves side to side. He has a diaphragm joint in here, which is tricky to get to because of this coat and everything. And I wish this was a little bit more of a softer material. You know, it's kind of tough moving this around. But you can get him to move forward and not really back so much. You get side to side movement up there and a little bit of pivot. He has hip joints that, you know, you can't really get him to move outward that much. He can kick forward. Uh, he has an upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees, and the ankles barely move down. They barely move up. They rotate side to side just fine and no ankle pivot. The weakest point of this figure is the ankle articulation. It's a very difficult figure to get to stand. Now here's looking at the six inch Goliath head sculpt. Now this Goliath is the figure I was looking forward to the most. And I think they did a really good job on this. I'm very happy to have this. I like the flesh tone. The gold looks pretty good. Paint apps came out pretty clean. I feel like there's some weird lumps in the head sculpt. I, I don't really know how to pinpoint it, but there's parts of it that, I don't know, it's a little awkward to me, but you know, I'm just nitpicking. Nothing too big to complain about on this. It looks pretty solid. The ears are painted all right. You can see a tiny bit of blue seeping in right there, but it looks pretty good. However, on the rest of the figure, you get a lot of little splotches coming through here. You can see the blue seeping right there. And I did see multiples of this, and there are some that it's a lot worse where you can see the blue coming out through the middle of these yellow sections. So that could be troublesome. 
but I do think they added a lot, like right over here, you can see blue coming through. So yeah, this is blue plastic with yellow paint over it. We'll say, I think it would have been nice if they had painted a little bit more yellow going into the shoulders over here, because as soon as you put this down, it's like the yellow just disappears and it doesn't really connect to the chest section. Anyway, looking on the back over here, you know, this is the Bucky Cat mold, nothing too new. Well, we get a new belt though, and I do like that they've painted these little spots right over here gold. I think that's pretty awesome. And it's just a matted color figure, you know what I mean? Not any shiny plastic or anything like that. So, yeah, still got the peg holes. Now for your 6-inch Hank Pym comparisons, we have our Toy Biz Marvel Legends Ant-Man figure over here, and then we have the recently released Hank Pym Giant Man. Then here's our 6-inch Goliath compared to the pre-Marvel Legends repaint Toy Biz Goliath, and then we have the Gigantic Battlers Goliath over here. These two both have yellow shadowing effects going on on the yellow sections. This one does not. And then speaking of Gigantic Battlers, here's Mustachio McForehead, the largest one from the set. And I'm a little disappointed in this piece. I think these antennae just came out really weird looking. I, I don't know. I mean, they don't fall down, so I guess, you know, engineering wise, they work, I guess. But I feel like the eye right here on the left side is painted kind of weird, so he's a bit cockeyed. And he does not have the black panels that he's supposed to have on the side of his head. The six inch version does have that there. I do like how the antennae came out on the six version much more. You know, it doesn't look like a mustache nearly as much as this one right over here. These are pretty firm. You know, you could kind of move them around a little bit, so they're durable. It doesn't seem like they're going to break or anything, but I just don't like how they're designed. And I wasn't really too bummed out about the paint job on this figure until I look at the Gigantic Battlers Goliath again, because that one has shadowing effect on the blue and yellow sections. This one does not have any shadowing effect at all on the red. I do like the high gloss for the black, though. I think that does look really cool. It just looks like they didn't finish it right there on the hands themselves. You know, you could see it right there on the forearms, but it's incomplete on the hands. On the sides of the figure, it looks really good, though. So I really wish we did get some shadowing effect on the red sections, at least. That would have been really nice. But for the most part, the paint is clean, so at least there's that. But yeah, this mold is a bit frustrating to work with, and you can see these fake boots right over here because they reused this. I think it was from an Icon Cyclops figure. Then the back of the figure actually does have some paint on it, which is good. I'm happy to see paint on the back of the figure. Then there's some more of that high gloss. And he also does have an added belt piece right over here, so I think that's where the pin particles go. You can't really move it around so much, but you know, I'm glad it's there. It's a separate piece, unlike the six inch version where they just painted it on, so I prefer that than just painting it like this. Now for articulation, you cannot move his head up. That's frustrating. He can look down a little bit. You get side to side movement over here, and you get a little bit of a head tilt right over there too. His shoulders move outward, you can move them forward, clickety, clickety. Uh, he has a bicep swivel, he has double jointed elbows, he does have a wrist swivel and it hinges up and down. He does have the ab crunch, bends forward, moves back, he has a waist swivel. These hip joints are Y joints and they're very difficult to use. I can't really get this one moving so well. It's very, I feel like I'm gonna break it if I push inward, you know, more than, oh, there it goes. Okay, and it did not break, all right? So just needed a little bit of tough love, I guess. But yeah, so that, that's tricky to move around and it looks a bit awkward over there you know so if you're familiar with these kind of wide joints it's kind of weird so you can get it to move forward but then moving that upper thigh swivel is very difficult because you get this piece of plastic right here that gets in the way of that hip piece so you can only get him to kick forward that much uh, or that much I guess you can move up a little bit more than that you can move that downward you can also move the legs outward right here you get the thigh swivel double jointed knees and then you get the ankles that move side to side and they hinge up and down no ankle pivot this thing desperately needs ankle pivot damn it now to the top of his and ten eye giant man standing at about 12 and a half inches tall and then here he is next to Goliath and you can see how they're reusing the same body mold for these there's also a giant man that looks just like this also it has the same belt and same head sculpt I dodged that one and I'm glad I waited for this one then here's our new giant man figure compared to the pre Marvel Legends giant man and we have the epic build a figure giant man from toy biz I wish we went with the original look so that we can get a cooler growing effect going on over here but I'm gonna try to still get that setup going I don't know maybe I'll get an extra one of these and have it repainted so it fits in with the rest of these giant men so without any customizations or anything, this is the growing giant man setup that we have right now. A bit inconsistent, right? I think it's very inconsistent. We get these two modern Marvel Now giant men in the mix right over there. So I don't know, man. I think I may get some customizations going on so that this could look like one continuous thing. I may put these Marvel Now giant men in a different display, but, you know, for the moment, this doesn't really look that bad. Then here's the new giant man compared to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Dude. Please do not step on me. Huh? 
So there's parts about this Giant Man figure that disappoint me. Overall, I think it's a very cool idea to make this an exclusive set, and I'm glad Hasbro made it. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my video. If you did, please hit the like button. Click any of these boxes over here for more shart in your face. Don't forget to check out my Patreon account. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and go to MarvelousNews.com for the latest in Marvel-related news. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! And speaking of gigantic battlers, here's the gi-